Hello. <clears throat> Welcome to day eight of the advent of Cyber 2023 Trihackney's accessibility showcase event thing that we're doing in this playlist. Today's task is a doozy. It's um, doable. If they had implemented my suggestions from previous days already, which they have not yet, so it's undoable. <laughs> it's actually completely undoable currently. Um, this is the first time where I had to actually get someone um, with a pair of working eyeballs to get one flag to happen. Not because I wouldn't be able to uh, do it myself, but because I wouldn't have access to the tools properly. In order to do it myself, I'm going to start the machine while we waffle on here. Um, <clears throat> basically, the, this, this task plays completely within a VM. And we still don't have audio in these VMs. Nor internet access. So there's no way for me to sneak a screen reader onto there. Or get audio working. Which means that we have to work with OCR. And that would technically be doable with this task. But it takes forever. Like... I haven't really played with this app myself um, on a regular machine, so I don't really know how it works. And I'm sort of figuring it out from OCR and can get relatively far. Uh, we'll show off a couple of things in here while we, uh, as we go. Some of the questions I've already had to fill in uh, beforehand because they were so um, specifically dependent on getting the exact right results. And I had to use AI for some of it and two eyeballs for some other stuff of it. Uh, I've already um, filled it in for the question, so I wouldn't have to flounder while I'm on the actual video, and I will read them out when I get to them. Some of them are going to be long, fair warning. Um, some of the other ones I did figure out just by looking at the files, though. We're not going to be doing much of that in this video, because, again, it would take forever. But we're going to see if we can get at least a little bit of, uh, of a peek at this uh, FTK imager tool that we are going to be using. It's actually re relatively accessible on, you know, a well-equipped well, well machine with a screen reader. It's not great, but it's doable. Um, but yeah, over OCR, no, just, just no. Unfortunately, that's just not going to be happening. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's go through the story because it's quite, um, <laughs> quite an event eventful one, I believe, this time. I've skipped, I usually skip the story segments when I do these recon, um, runs through these tasks to see if it's doable with a, with a video and what I need to do before I can start recording this for you guys. And um, I saw something about a bad USB stick, so that's going to be interesting. Let's, uh, let's see what happens while we wait for this machine to boot. The story. Lottie animation. Oh. You've unlocked a streak freeze. With these one-time streak freezes, you can miss one day of hacking without losing your... Oh, it's Duolingo. <laughs> I hope that's not covering anything important on the screen because I have no idea. Can I, can I find that? Freeze. No, like that's literally not even in, in the DOM. So I would not be able to click that away if I wanted to. Uh. No, unfortunately, uh, I can get rid of it. Okay. Oh, I guess it's gone. Whatever. So. The drama unfolds as the Best Festival Company and the Antarcticraft's merger wraps up. Tracy McGreedy, now a grumpy regional manager, secretly plants sabotage. His sidekick, Van Sprinkles, hesitantly kicks off a cyber attack. But guess what? Van Sprinkles is having second thoughts and helps McSkitty's team bust McGreedy's evil scheme. Connecting to the machine. Before moving forward, review the questions on in the connection card shown below. The alt text says day eight. What should I do today? Connection detail. A uh, card details. Start the target machine. A split screen view iframe is available, and credentials are provided for RDP, VNC, or SSH directly into the machine. Now, <laughs> I believe there are actually separate checkboxes for SSH and RDP, so they could have customize these alt text a little bit more to indicate which of the one is actually checked but they've just sort of gone with a this this or this event and you can usually see what they mean if you just read a little bit further down so eh. could have been better but i love that this actually is here because it wasn't here last week so i guess that's good <clears throat> let's start the virtual machine in a split screen view by clicking the green start machine button on the upper right section of this task 
If the VM is not visible, use the blue show split view button at the top right of the page. Yeah, same, we've already seen this before. <clears throat> Alternatively, using the credentials below, you can connect to uh, the VM via RDP. Please allow the machine at least four minutes to fully de deploy before interacting with it. Okay, well, well, I'll keep reading then. Uh, there's a little key icon, I believe. It says THM key credentials is the alt text. And then we have username, a uh, analyst, and password is capital O, small, uh, capital A, small O, capital C, 2023 exclamation point. IP is 10.10.133.210 in my case. Okay, we're going to be needing that soon. So I'll copy this to my clipboard because we're going to do this over RDP this time. Important! The VM has all the... <laughs> All the artifacts and clues to uncover McGreedy's shady plan. There is no need for fancy hacks, brute force, and the like. Dive into FTK Imager and start the detective work. I would love to, but we can't because there's no audio on this virtual machine. Super rude. Task objectives. Use FTK Imager to track down and piece together McGreedy's deleted digital breadcrumbs, exposing his evil scheme. Learn how to perform the following with FTK Imager. Just a second here. There. Analyze digital artifacts and evidence. Recover deleted digital artifacts and evidence. Verify the integrity of a drive and or image used as evidence. Join McSkitty's Forensic McBlue and the team and the team in this digital forensic journey. Expose the corporate... Oops. Expose the corporate conspiracy by navigating through cyber clues and unraveling McGreedy's dastardly digital deeds. Antarcticraft's parking lot, uh, parking lot and the unsuspecting Frostling. Lottie animation alt text. Another Lottie animation alt text. I guess we're missing stuff here. Van Jolly plugging the bad USB. Oh dear. So we have two um, alt texts here that just say Lottie animation. I'm assuming cool stuff's happening in the panels. Uh, that we cannot read. Maybe a comic thing or something else. That is sad. We're missing a little bit of the story. Oh well. Um... Then we have an image that says Vanjoli plugging the bad USB in, I'm assuming. Van Sprinkles wrestling with his cons conscience scatters USB drives loaded with malware. <coughs> little, little do the Antarcticraft's employees know a storm's brewing in their network. Vanjoli, shivering and clueless, finds a USB drive in the parking lot. Little does she know that disaster crafted by the vengeful McGreedy. Oh. oh, that plugging it in will unleash a digital disaster crafted by the vengeful McGreedy. But this is exactly what she does. Don't do that. Upon reaching her desk, she immediately plugs the USB drive in. An anonymous tip and confrontation with Vengeli. Ooh, Skitty receives an anonymous email tip. That's an alt text. Another Lottie animation. Amidst the digital chaos of notifications and alerts from the cyber attack, Xkitty gets a cryptic email. It's Van Sprinkles, ridden with guilt, nudging her towards exposing McGreedy without blowing his own cover. Xkitty, with a USB in hand, reveals to Van Jolly the true nature of her in innocent find, a tool for digital destruction. Shock and disbelief play across Van Jolly's face as McSkitty explains the gravity of the situation and the digital pandemonium unleashed upon their network by the insidious device. McSkitty, Forensic McBlue, and his team, having confiscated the USB drive from Van Jolly, dive into a digital forensic adventure to unravel the every line of code... Uh... Sorry. To unravel a web of deception hidden in the device. Every line of code has a story. Skitty and the team piece it together, inching closer to the shadow in their network. 
investigating the malicious USB flash drive. In our scenario, the right protected USB drive that McSkitty confiscated will automatically be attached to the VM upon startup. The VM mounts an emulated USB flash drive, backslash, backslash, in all caps, physical drive to space dash, space Microsoft virtual disk, uh, left bracket, 1 GB SCSI right bracket in read only mode to re replicate the scenario where a physical drive connected to a write blocker is attached to an actual machine for forensic analysis. Lottie animation uh, again. <laughs> when applied in the real world, a forensic lab and analyst will first note the sus. I can't read today. We'll first note the suspected drive and forensic artifacts details, such as the vendor manufacturer and hardware ID, and the mount, and then mount it with a write blocking device to prevent accidental data tampering during forensic analysis. FTK Imager. FTK Imager is a forensics tool that allows forensic specialists to acquire computer data and perform analysis without affecting the original evidence, preserving its authentici authenticity, integrity, and, val and validity for presentations during a trial in a court of law. Working with FTK Imager, open FTK Imager and navigate to File, bra Arrow, Add Evidence Item, select Physical Drive in the pop-up window, then choose our emulated USB drive. That one that we read before. <laughs> it's long. So, um, actually, let's let's at this point pause and um, see if we can manage to do that in the RDP. I will bring up the remote desktop connection. We are going to paste in this new IP we found. We're going to click show options using the uh, the regular old vanilla. Uh, Windows version of this. So here we go. Analyst is the username. We're going to connect. Okay. Once the password, which was capital O, uh, capital A, small O, big C, 2023 exclamation point. We're getting a certificate error. We say yes. And we're in. Okay. So let me put this on the screen. Let's see if we can get anything done with this. This is when the, the fun stuff uh, starts, unfortunately. Um, let's see if I can get this to show even. We need this source. And we need it to focus on, where is it? MSTSC, that's the one. Yeah, there is the remote connection. And now we need to start doing interesting things because we have literally no screen reader at this point. Um, all we have is NVDA's OCR feature, which we are going to be using. Here's the FTK imager. We want that open, so we'll double click that. That's going to take a little bit to, uh, to boot up here. At some point, it's going to ask for uh, admin permission. So what I'm going to do is just hit Alt-Y, Alt-Tab, Alt-Y. We're actually not sending... Uh, stuff there. Now we are. Yeah. Chinese. Simplify. All good. Alt Y. Alt Y. Alt Y. Alt Y. Alt Y. Alt Y. We should now hopefully have the FTK FTK image open. Let's see what the uh, computer says. Tools. FTK spot NVDA speech viewer MSTSC dot X ten point one zero point one three ten point ten ten point recognizing result document speech mode deep speech show speech viewer on screen cast scene scene screen cast Georgian face test property search e filter sources NVDA MST audio mixer scene prod fade. It mostly just says what's visible in the little uh, speech control panel thing. If it did work, left click, left click. Uh, we didn't get anything. Left click. There. Input right capture window. So this is why this is, this is a little harrowing. This didn't actually bother me as much when I was doing this by myself because the speech viewer window wasn't covering my screen. 
Um, right now it appears to be covering the screen and if it turns out that we just can't get anything done on this then I'm very sorry but we're just going to deal with the screenshots that we have on the page here. It's a pretty standard and pretty in intuitive application. There's not much to it. You basically open the thing, you add the, the drive to the uh, evidence tree view and then you can just sort of look around it and delete. You can undelete stuff, you can export stuff to your file system for you to look at. And yeah, that's really all you're doing. So let me just give this one more try. Uh, it lets me. Speech mode, speech mode there we go. Speech mode recognize recycle pin tools FTK and spy. NVDA speech FTK and spy. FTK and spy. NVDA speech viewer MS NVDA and spy. FT left 12 9 30 dismiss. New wise note of dismiss. Yeah, no, I don't think we're going to get far with this today. Um, <clears throat> everything's discovering everything. So I'm going to switch my uh, thing back to. I'm sorry about this. I'm going to switch my thing back to the browser. We're just going to use the browser to, uh, to run the examples I was thinking about. Try text suggestions from Bing. No, I will not uh, try that. Windows with thank you so much for that. Right click grouping. Op yeah. 60 properties. Okay. Op 20 We're gonna right put click. it back on the browsers. The Chrome one. There it goes. Okay. So yeah, basically, <clears throat> I'm going to just narrate what I would have done and what I have already done because we can't we can't show it off because inaccessibility. But um, it's it's not honestly. There's not much that you're missing at this point. Um, so we're adding an end device using the uh, FTK imager. That's the thing that we were just had described. The next one is selecting a physical drive and the evidence source. That is the uh, alt text for this image. Then we have uh, this image in particular. Then we have FTK imager user interface UI. FTK imager's interface is intuitive and user friendly. Yeah, it really is. There's really not much to it. It displays an X icon next to deleted files and includes key UI components um, vital for its functionality. So I haven't seen the Xs because I've only seen this with an OCR. Maybe it's also visible uh, for actual NVDA when I play with this in the thing, but they did not offer the downloadable version of this image, which they could have easily done because FTK Imager can also look at images of things, like images as in ISO files which would have made this a lot easier. You can just use your own toolkit that you have set up painstakingly so it works for you, but no. Uh, okay, uh, the components are one, evidence tree pane. Displays a hierarchical view of the added evidence sources, such as hard drives, flash drives, and forensic image files. Two, file list pane. Displays a list of files and folders contained in the selected directory from the evidence tree pane. Three, viewer pane displays a content of selected files in either the evidence tree pane or the file list pane. So it's really similar to actually like Windows Explorer or another file manager. We have an image here. Uh, okay. Yeah. FTK image provide previewing previewing modes. FTK imager presents three distinct modes for displaying file content arranged sequentially from left to right, each represented by Icons enclosed in yellow. Well, super helpful. Automatic mode. Select the optimal preview mode based on the file type. It utilizes Internet Explorer, i.e. for web-related files, display text files in ASCII or Unicode, and opens unrecognizable files types in their native applications or as hexadecimal code. I'm kind of amused that <laughs> IE is still alive in this particular way, but I guess it works. Number two, text mode. Well, that's just, you know, only text. This mode is useful for revealing hidden text and binary data in non-text files. Yeah. So you're forcing it at that point. Normally it might open it in something else, but if you want to actually look at a binary file in, in like a text editor, the kind of way you would, like if you were to open it in Notepad, for example, to see if you can find stuff in there, that will be your text mode. And then there's also a explicit hex mode, which does the opposite. Basically shows you everything in, uh, in hex. Use control F to search for specific text within a file while, while either in text or hex preview mode. Yeah, that's super helpful. I'll tell you why in a second. Huh? Oh, well, that's rude. Hang on. We need to control F because my focus just leapt to the top of the page for reasons. Go back. Uh, 
Where are we? Strange. Uh, hang on. Let me, uh... so we left the room. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Well, that's fine. Go up a bit. Yeah, here we are. Hex mode. We did this. Use control F2. Yeah, we saw, we saw that too. FTK imager recovering deleted files and folders. Now, this is how we do that. To view and recover deleted files, expand directories in the file list pane and evidence tree pane. Right click and select export files on individual files marked with an X icon or an entire or on entire directories slash devices for bulk recovery of files, whether deleted or not. Yeah, that'll actually export like a copy to your workstation. We got some images here of how that works. Uh, FTK imager verifying drive and image integrity. Obviously, when you do do something in the court of law, it needs to be super, super precisely correct. And you want to make sure that your checksums match, which is something that, of course, uh, any forensics tool would let you do as well. To verify the integrity of a drive or image, click on its from the evidence tree pane and navigate to file and then verify drive slash image to obtain its md5 and sha1 or sha1 hashes okay practical exercise with ftk imager use what you have learned today to analyze the contents of the usb drive and answer the questions below important please use hex hex mode instead of text mode to avoid crashing ftk imager when processing files as text answer the questions below so i'll ex i'll explain what i did because this took me like literally an hour to do and i don't want to make another one and a half hour video so basically what i did was just poking around a whole bunch with ocr um i was able to add the physical drive to the machine by clicking on the physical drive drop down that made the uh, second drive show up because it doesn't isn't there even initially you need to expand that first uh, so you click on the physical life 2, which is uh, the one that has the stuff on it. And then once you've done that, it, sh it shows, it populates that tree view. Uh, there's one directory at the very top called do not open, which of course, you know, you open. So we tried, um, I tried a whole bunch of like clicking that, using right arrow in the tree view, hoping I was focused on the tree view, pressing right arrow to open that up. And eventually I managed it. Don't exactly remember how I did it. But obviously without accessibility, I don't know what I'm focused on. So I'm literally just flying blind, basically. Um, so in this do not open folder, there was a lot of naughty stuff. I saw a um, crypto miner and a secret chat. And a secret chat.txt was a chat with between two guys. Uh, I don't think we had names. But um, there was a, a, a chat about the uh, con command and control server. And the command and control server, the C2 server for short, is mentioned there as being, uh, what was it? McGreedy. And that's the first question. What is the malware C2 server? And that was McGreedy. So MC Greedy secret C2 dot THM, I believe it was. Uh, yeah, that's the correct answer. So mcgreedy secret c2.thm so not mcgreedy's secret but mcgreedy secret c2.thm all right second question what is the file inside the deleted zip archive so i wasn't able to undelete the file but there is a zip file called uh juicy tomatoy.zip and that matched the amount of letters so um I actually really had a quick look at the video for this one, uh, the one that's in the top of the room description, to see if I got this right, and I did. Apparently, the answer to this is juicy tomatoy.exe. Uh, yeah, there it goes. Took me a second. It took a second to validate. Did I do it wrong? So juicy tomatoy, the tomato with a y at the end. Dot exe tomato. All right. Um. Next one, what flag is hidden in one of the deleted PNG files? This is where that control F comes in. So there's two PNG files in that list. 
uh, that I actually was in, unable to find with OCR, but there is two ones. I think wallpaper.png and portrait.png. And that has a flag in one of them. One of them has a flag in it and you cannot do this with OCR because it's like lead speak and there's different capitalizations and things. This is where I needed eyeballs to make sure I had the right flag, the exact right flag. So going to read it out. It's um, capitals THM, left brace, small b, small y, small t, three, dash, capital L, three, v, e, l, underscore at sign n four capital l y s one five right brace which spells out byte level analysis in lead speak um so yeah that's what that is that is ridiculously long but that's what i'm pretty sure that's a that's an at sign right speech mode talk at. yeah speech mode at off. sign uh, so i read it right and then the next one is even more annoying because that's a 40 letter um hexadecimal code that you also have to uh, grab from an OCR print or from something else if you don't have access to the things, which we currently do not. So the um, last question, what is the SHA-1 hash of the physical, physical drive and forensic image? That is, I'm just having to computer read it because that's easier because I don't want to. It's 40 characters. Speech, speech mode talk. All right. Button answer form nine three. Three. Nine. F. Two. D. E. A. Six. F. F. D. Four. Three. D. F. Eight. Zero. D. Eight. Zero. F. One. Nine. D. One. Two. Two. Zero. Seven. Six. D. Three. Six. Eight. Two. Seven. Seven. Three. C. Two. Or for the distinguished people. Answer format. 40 star edit unavailable. 39 F2D6 FFD43 DFADD AF19 D122076 D3682773 C2. There you go. And with that, the task is practically done. We didn't do much. Well, I did a bunch, but you guys didn't see that. Um, and it says, if you like today's challenge, the digital forensics case B. What does that say? Speech link. Yes. E space B four D M seven. Oh B B uh B four D M seven five five which five seven M Wait Batmuts <laughs> Not sure what that spells out. Yeah, bad mts. Room is an excellent overview of incident response DIF DFIR process. Uh, yeah, we already printed that in, so that's completed. And with that, the task is done, and so is this video. Sorry for the uh, that low amount of action in this one. Blame TriHack me. I tried. Um, so basically, um, accessibility considerations for this one. What could I have done better? Um, for one, enable audio on these machines. I've said this in several videos already, and it really isn't that much of a big change. Just, just make sure there is an audio device present. That's literally all you need to do. Uh, currently there isn't, and therefore narrator can not speak, and therefore uh, RDP channels can't carry audio either. Um, another way you could have done this is make an image of the forensics is the drive that's connected to the VM. I get the whole, you know, you don't need to download anything or install anything, but if you do want to do that, it'd be great if you could just sort of download the file as well. Um, I'm also aware that try hack me rooms generally come in either file based or VM based, but I'm pretty sure there's some kind of way where you can link to a file. Like it could be a mega upload for all I care, but stick it somewhere so people can download their own machine, use their own toolkit with their own setups and their own like font selections and things. Like I saw even in the video, like for this task, the person that was doing it was, um, apologizing for the fact they couldn't make the font bigger. Uh, on their remote machine because it was quite small. Um, obviously, that's that's an accessibility issue, but it's also just annoying. Uh, so great that you don't have to like, install anything, but if you do want that option, it'd be great to just give that a little bit more, and it wouldn't really take anything. Just stick it in this S3 bucket somewhere and you're done. So that would be a way to fix this because the tool itself, FTK Imager, it's not fully accessible by any stretch of the imagination for screen reader users, but it's certainly usable. Like you need to do a little bit of OCR and a little bit of flickering with the mouse, but you can get through it. 
just not in, in this convoluted way that they've set it up. Which, fair enough, but yeah. That's my little uh, rant on how this could have been done better. Uh, it's a new week. It's a new set of seven challenges. Um, I'm going to be doing these until I can't anymore. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get to the entire uh, thing. But so far I'm having fun. I actually did not do... Uh, there was no uh, D DFIR component last year, so that's cool that they're doing that now. Um, I'm having fun with it. I'm hoping you guys are having fun with it and learning stuff as I'm doing these. And uh, by that, I'm going to end the video. I hope this was useful and have a good day. See you tomorrow for the next one. Now I found out I've been streaming all this time. Nope. Bye.